January, Stacey Arthur accused three Playboy employees of raping her on the grounds of Hugh Hefner's mansion. Tonight, the accused security guards and Playboy butler's versions of what they say really happened in the jacuzzi and game room of the lavish estate, a night of consensual group sex. I believe this whole thing was a, was a setup. She said to her, sex is like tennis. <laughs> Also, Playboy hits back against Stacey Arthur's charges, and Miss January breaks down as her parents learn of the incident for the first time on television. I really need a break. I just... A special report, the Miss January incident. This is hard copy for Friday, February 7th, 1992. Hello and welcome. I'm Barry Nolan. We'll be joining Terry Murphy later backstage at the Miss USA pageant. But first, the story that's rocking Hugh Hefner's Playboy empire. Stacey Arthur, the Miss January in line for the Playmate of the Year award, has brought instant and dramatic reaction from Playboy with her sensational rape accusations. In tonight's special report. Doug Bruckner has details of the starkly different version given by the three accused men in the case. Stacy was not drugged. She was not drunk. She was coherent. And in my opinion, Stacy Arthur felt that she was having the time of her life. Stacy was happy. Stacy was content. She's of that mentality that she'll do anything to keep her name in, in the press. She just craves to see her face to make her feel like a celebrity. These are two of the three men Playboy Playmate Stacy Arthur says raped her at Hugh Hefner's Playboy Mansion last October. I remember screaming. I remember saying no. A lot of the, um, you know, typical things you go through of going into shock. But the story they tell is far different from Stacy's. And she got in the water. She was actually the first one to take off her clothes. And uh, so we, we just robed and we got into the water. And then... Uh, from there, she, she initiated in every bit of physical contact and sexual contact. She was the initiator. When she was insistent. Former security guard Raymond Turner and ex-butler Jerry Fowler admit having sex with Stacy that night, but they say it was consensual, not rape. Her, one of her favorite sayings is, I should have been a man. My sex drive is so high. She said to her, sex is like tennis. It all began in the jacuzzi. Then it moved to the game room of the guest house. Stacy claims she was beaten and raped. The two men say the party was just continuing. She comes up to me and she starts filling my chest, talking about I have a nice physique and well-defined chest that I have, and she starts undoing my shirt. And after a while, I just uh, continue to, un to, to undress myself at this time. And uh, we had intercourse, Con consensual intercourse, Stacy and I did. At this point later on, did the two other gentlemen join you in there? What happened is, is while we were in the middle of this, the phone rang, and uh, Stacy thought that it might be her husband, so she gets up and she goes out, and it's her husband. It was just sort of a little party atmosphere, you know? It, it was fun. We were, between us, we were laughing and giggling, and you know, it was fun. So why would Stacy make all this up? My understanding, and I don't, I don't have proof of this, but I have been told that, that they, did, they did ask for hush money, which of of course, Playboy, you know, is too smart for that. Hush money only indicates guilt, and it doesn't hush up anybody. And the fact is, Playboy had nothing to hide here. The, the criminal action, I really don't think that was Stacy and Jim's intention. I think they wanted to handle this internally, go to Miss Hefner, gain their sympathy. Poor, poor me, I've been this, I've been victimized. And, and use that as a way of gaining Playmate of the Year, the $100,000 she was going to take to go and cut that demo record she's been trying to do so she can be a country singer. The other man Stacy accused, former security guard Rennie Bates, told essentially the same story to police. Turner, Fowler, and Bates spoke to police after being interrogated by the Playboy security men. The police report says Fowler and Bates passed lie detector tests, but that Turner tested, quote, deceptive. Well, the only thing to do is to come forward and tell the truth because uh, you can, the truth won't hurt you. The truth, I believe that the truth will set you free. And I knew that there were an, uh, enough people who had saw what was going on, who had been there, knew that what Stacy was claiming was not true. There were so, there's so many uh, false statements in, in Stacy's uh, report. It, it's, it's incredible. And basically, she seduced them. Playboy's director of security, Bill Raywald, says he conducted his own investigation of the case. 
the investigation revealed that whatever occurred at the mansion was purely consensual by all parties concerned. And that was my finding and an independent investigation conducted by the Los Angeles Police Department came up with the same findings. So why were all three men, all longtime employees, fired from the Playboy organization? The reason the individuals concerned were terminated for fraternizing with the guests. That's an absolute no-no. Was Stacy uh, naked in the jacuzzi when, when they encountered, when the, the staff of the encounter? No, absolutely not. I, I, I believe if she was at that time, they would have panicked and ran out. Raywald's defense may seem to go too far, but not as far as his attack on Stacy's behavior before the alleged incident. She was not uh, acting in the way that most of the playmates do there, and she made certain statements that might have led people to believe that she was coming on to someone. And the behavior of she and her husband immediately following the alleged rape. That their prime concern at the time was that it would not affect her candidacy for being playmate of the year. Um, he showed very little emotion. Uh, he was not the least bit upset. Uh, he was somewhat upset, but not as one normally would be uh, for an incident like this uh, regarding the individuals concerned. Uh, his primary concern was whether or not this would affect her becoming Playmate of the Year. Raywald brought a picture of Stacy taken two months later after her husband was murdered, murdered by a man who called Stacy on Playboy's 900 line. The picture shows Stacy back at the Playboy Mansion at Hefner's New Year's Bash. With her sister-in-law and her manager and uh, one of the other Playmate candidates, and she appeared very happy at the New Year's Eve party as though she uh, held no animosity toward Playboy. And why at this time she's coming out with this, uh, I don't know. Bill Raywald denies Stacy's accusation that Hugh Hefner's wife Kimberly tried to convince Stacy the rape never happened. No, on the contrary, it was Kimberly, in fact, who got her to call her husband and had him fly out at our expense to California to be with her. And it was Kimberly who also encouraged her to immediately, her and her husband, to go to the hospital for treatment. He had no explanation as to why Stacy would make up such a story and we wanted to see if we could keep her uh, as a good Playmate candidate. Uh, in fact, she reacted to that in a very positive manner. She did go on promotions for Playboy. She spoke very highly of Playboy after the incident. Are we so dumb and so stupid that we would rape and bludgeon a woman on the place where we work? And then in the police report it says they fled in unknown directions. Where are we going to run to? Where are we going to run to? You know, that's that it's insane to even think that intelligent people would buy into that. To me, it's absurd that, that anyone could believe that I could go to work just like any other night for, for the last six years, and I'm going to brutally rape a girl, and then go back to work like nothing ever happened. It's just absurd. While Playboy and the accused men responded, Stacey Arthur's parents learned of the rape allegations for the first time last night on television. And Stacey broke down, as our special report continues after this. Next week on Hard Copy, Cindy Adams, queen of celebrity secrets, burning up Hollywood in Hollywood Confidential. Exclusive, Marilyn Monroe's love child. Exclusive, Madonna's sex outrage. Exclusive, one bedroom night with Elvis. All in Hollywood Confidential next week. Back in a moment with more Hard Copy. Hollywood Pictures presents Sean Connery. We need help. Don't you presume to tell me how to follow up. A man determined to make a difference. I found a cure for the plague of the 20th century, and now I've lost it. This is the cure for cancer. I know. Now you move your road through here, and we've lost it. From John McTiernan, the director of Die Hard and the Hunt for Red October. Medicine Man, rated PG-13. Now playing at a theater near you. At the peak of his NHL career, Hogan Reed left Calgary for a simpler life. His story next. This Olympic moment is brought to you by Duranmo's TV and Appliance. He was an NHL All-Star, a 50-goal scorer, a Stanley Cup champion in Calgary, but Hogan Reed always wanted to bring his family back home, so he said goodbye to the same money in the NHL. 
He now spent full time with his two sons, but come February, Lou will lead the world champion Swedish team towards gold in Albertville. Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Rickard. Coming up tonight at 6 on KEPR News, the Tri-City Americans are finally back from their all-star break. They play Lethbridge tonight, and it's regional wrestling time at Kennewick High School. All that and more at 6 o'clock on KEPR. Uncomfortable pressure or pain in your chest lasting more than a few minutes with lightheadedness, sweating, or shortness of breath may mean a heart attack. Don't wait. Call your emergency medical service. You can help prevent heart disease. We can tell you how. herself on television before the eyes of the nation telling a harrowing story of alleged rape at the Playboy Mansion. And she knew two other very important people would know her story for the first time, her mother and father. The result, Pacey finally broke down. Doug Bruckner continues. My mom and dad who have heard this for the very first time on national television. I talked to them tonight and had to deal with the amount of pain that they're going through, the anger that my father's going through, and trying to keep this from my children. And for you to ask me to sit down and go through it step by step, I just think that's asking a lot. This is Stacy Arthur, just moments after last night's hard copy. Moments after her mother and father found out about allegations of rape at the Playboy Mansion. Stacy Arthur, all she ever wanted to do was become Playmate of the Year, even after her husband was murdered by a man who called her on Playboy's 900 phone line. When somebody's gunned down in, in cold blood, someone that you love, you see it played on TV over and over and over again. That's beyond being able to describe the, the amount of pain that you go through. But now her dream is over. Stacy's been told the new Playmate of the Year is the Playmate who roomed with Stacy the night she was allegedly raped by three men at the Playboy Mansion. I don't know. I think it looks a little suspicious to me, the person that happened to be rooming with me that evening. I think that raises a lot of suspicions in my eyes. Stacy says she'll go for a bigger prize in court. I really feel that there's a lot of people out there that believe me and believe what has happened. And I really think that there's going to be some things done and I think there's going to be some changes. And I think that these people are going to be brought to justice. Stacy says she's suing Playboy for wrongful death, and she's suing over the alleged rape at Hugh Hefner's mansion. There's responsibility that lies here that has not been addressed by him or anybody from Playboy. And I think that's very, very poor. I mean, there, there's just no excuse for it. Stacy Arthur says she was ready for the defense and counterattack laid out by Playboy. The investigation revealed that whatever occurred at the mansion was purely consensual by all parties concerned. We knew that probably long before um, any charges were going to be brought against these people, that they were going to get together and have a very, very long talk and get their stories together and make sure that everybody's stories coincided and that they were very much the same. They knew that I'd gone into the rape clinic they knew that there was going to be evidence there that they had had sex. They knew that they really didn't have much choice other than to agree that they did have sex. So to them, to say that it was consensual sex was the only way for them to get out of this or to try to get out of it. Stacy showed us hate mail she's received since her husband's death, and we showed her mail hard copy has received, claiming Stacy used Playboy promotion tours to meet and service wealthy men. Stacy says it was quite the opposite. I've been on very legitimate promotional tours, but I also have been on one particular incident that I recall in Atlantic City where I saw this sort of thing going on, where girls that have been on the same tour every single year in Atlantic City 
where they have been put one-on-one -on -one with clients, asked to stand beside them. They've been offered chips, money, and they go on up to their room and spend time either snorting it up their nose or sleeping with the guy. People have commented on Stacy's cool demeanor in light of the horrors surrounding her. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here to talk about this if I didn't have a point to make. But last night, talking with Ames Yates about her children far away and her husband gone forever, Stacy finally cracked. I'd like him to think of me as being very strong. As being the type of person that can stand up for what she believes in regardless of who's out there. Regardless of how scared. Regardless of who's going to believe me or who's not going to believe me. So that when they grow up, they can go out and they can do what they believe in. And say, my mom taught me this. He always told me that I was a very, very strong person, and I never believed him. <laughs> but he left me with a lot, a lot of strength. What have you learned about, what has Stacy Arthur taught Stacy Arthur about this last couple of last year? All that glitters isn't gold. All the dreams aren't necessarily what's really important. We'll have more on this story Monday. Now, we'll join our Terry Murphy in a hidden world backstage at the Miss USA pageant after this. Who wants fried it? I do. I do. Love the taste? I do. I do. Cinnamon, fresh mint? I do. I do. Sugar-free Trident, the one gum more dentists recommend, actually tastes great, too. Who wants Trident? I do, I do. Who? Cheated. Who wants Trident? We do, we do. I do, I do. Good for your teeth, great taste, too. Who wants Trident? I do. Now back pain doesn't have to ruin another night's sleep. Introducing new Dones PM. Dones starts with a unique pain reliever these brands don't have. Then adds a second ingredient to help you sleep. New Dones PM for nighttime back pain. Ragu introduces Chicken Tonight Simmer Sauces. And suddenly... I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight. Try country French chicken made with real cream and vegetables. So you just brown, simmer, and serve. Chicken Tonight. Four years ago, this speed skater was diagnosed with a rare blood disease. This year, he will be racing in the Olympics. On the next Entertainment Tonight, Olympians share intimate stories of courage and going for the gold. I was going to have to take this negative thing and turn it around into a positive thing. Like the 1964 skiing champ who today battles multiple sclerosis. It's important to me that I live each day as fully as possible. The Courage of the Gold, the inspiring inside story on Entertainment Tonight. Terry Murphy, glamorous as all get out, is...